Christian. Hello. Hi. How are you? Very good, man. Hey, man, you, your video was pretty good. You, that was that was good. Thank you, man. Thank you. It's it's been um, yeah such an adventure to to be here where I am now, and like things are not happening so quickly. Uh, everything is kind of a mess now, but yeah, I'm like really strong and I'm really committed on going to the OSC apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm very happy about it. I'm yeah, I'm super excited. That's awesome. Um, do you mind if we record this? Can we publish it? Yeah. Well, yeah, sure, sure. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. So, are you finishing your school right now, or is this? Yes. Well, yeah. Basically, I'm in my. Well, I finished all my courses now, and now I'm doing my uh, thesis. I'm doing it on sustainable open source hardware development. And uh, well, it's come kind of slow now, but um, um, I'm really excited of doing it with uh, with the team. Like once I finish the program, like get all the information and kind of get something more consistent. So yeah, that's basically my plan. But uh, well, I I should have uh, published it on September. But uh, well, I don't think I'm gonna do it now. So I'm gonna wait for next year. <clears throat> Tell me more about <clears throat> how your life has been a whirlwind. How has it been crazy these days? Well, yeah, like uh, well, basically a year ago, I found out that my uh, now wife was uh, pregnant. Mm. And well, I was still studying, mm. and she was in Peru, so I basically went for a visit. Okay. And then when I came back, I, I, uh, uh, she called me for, with the news, mm. and um, so then the pandemic hit, mm. and I couldn't go back, mm. and I was on my last semester, and so. I, uh, so yes, we were um, having a a really hard time. And well, she went. Well, we're from Lima, and mm -hmm. she went to Cusco mm -hmm. because she uh, has uh, midwife her there, and uh, mm -hmm. so she wanted to do a natural birth and mm -hmm. and really uh, do it right how it should be. So on August, I finished my my courses, and I uh, flew to to Peru. To to see her eight months uh, already and mm -hmm. like uh, stay with her for for the last month. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it was very exciting. Uh, it was very scary as well. We well, everything was perfect, and um, well now we're living here um, in Germany with with my seven year old uh, seven month old son. Yeah. And uh, well, and we came here, and we uh, thought we had a, a place to stay, but apparently it wasn't available yet. So we're now staying in my friend's place, and uh, it's kind of small, mm -hmm. but uh, we're looking to uh, to move anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and like uh, now that the apprenticeship is in July, and I just came on on April. Mm. It's uh, it's it's something that, like, it's really hard to handle. Yeah, uh, tell me about your wife. Does she want to come along, or is she uh, gonna stay in Germany, or what's the situation? Yeah, well, well, she wanted to go to Switzerland because she's got a friend there, mm -hmm. a very good uh, friend, mm -hmm. and uh, well, she's um, doing permaculture there, mm -hmm. and uh, well, basically, Valeria wants to go there. And, um, and learn from her and uh, yeah visit her community because she's living in a small farm with friends and family so it's uh, pretty nice but yeah I, uh, I thought it wasn't even possible for her my I, my son to to go to factory farm I don't know if it's if it's possible mm, possible on our side we can we can we could accommodate that if that 
we can talk more about that. But tell me more, um, how, how did you formulate, just, just background, how did you formulate your vision for what, what the world is about? You, you mentioned about seeing the inequalities in Peru. How did you get radicalized or socialized to, to the issues in the world? Yeah, well, I studied anthropology when I was 18. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically in Peru and I'm in pretty much Latin America mm -hmm. and basically all the third world countries, uh, you don't have to uh, go far to see inequality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you just have to um, like basically look out your window. Mm -hmm. And uh, like that really shocked me and uh, impacted me in, uh, in, a, in a lot of ways. And uh, I really think what um, I always see is God now um, the whole project and the, the vision and all the foundations you've been building is something mm -hmm. that is, is, is really tangible and mm -hmm. I think it can uh, leapfrog yes. to a much better society where people can uh, be democratized and autonomous mm -hmm. and not depend on centralized enterprises. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my my core in a sense, and that's what I'm following. What do your parents do back in? Uh, in Peru? Well, um, my mom's a coach. Co what kind of coach? And, uh, uh, like kind leadership, of? yeah, kind of b a business b oh. business coach. And uh, my dad is an entrepreneur. Oh. Nice. Uh, well, my grandfather had a. Um, um, natural gas distributor uh -huh. and um well my dad kind of went through that line and um yeah like i kind of uh, didn't want that for myself but i i really uh acknowledged and uh, uh the entrepreneurial side but now uh, i want to go into the social entrepreneur segment and uh, well, here I am. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, would you say like in back in Peru, are you guys like upper middle class, or you're like elites, or where would you put yourself? Oh. In? <laughs> well, I don't think elites the word, but uh, yeah, I think we're in uh, high class. But uh, yeah, well, um, I think uh, it it comes from my grandfather, and basically, it's it's. It's all been uh, cascading down. Do you get your ethical v viewpoints from your parents, or did you develop that much yourself? Well, I think uh, I, I developed it on my own, in a sense. But uh, my mom's got a lot to do with it. Mm. She's a very loving person, and uh, I think like I owe her a lot. Mm -hmm. And well, my dad gave me this uh, more uh, rigid, uh, disciplinary, structured. Uh, being but at the same time he meditates he's kind of into the buddhism kind of philosophy and uh, uh, i really uh, learned learn a lot of from her from him as well do you so meditate? yeah yeah i do i do like uh, not not like um how do you say like uh, every day structured but i kind of uh, try to understand condition conditionment maybe uh attachment attachment and um yeah and i think like that's the only way you can put it, um understand your human nature in a sense like if you um if you're always thinking i want to be free i want to be free i want to be free but at the same time you are conditioned by habits and by uh i don't know uh, mental models exactly mental models you uh, you would never be free, and uh, it's um, you just gotta kind of learn that from from yourself yeah. and learn your attachments, so you mm -hmm. can go beyond it in a sense. I, I I don't know if I can <laughs> make myself understand. No, absolutely clear. And mm, do you know if I meditate? Well, I do know. I do know. <laughs> you, you'd say it a lot. <laughs> but I... I've uh, been following. Yeah, <laughs> no, I do. It's transformative. It's, um, yeah. yeah. So I, I hear you completely. I, I, 
definitely. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> You were able to go into go to Germany. How did you choose Germany? Well, I got a passport. My grandfather came from Germany, uh, oh, but from okay. the other side, with uh, from my mother's side. Yeah. And so yeah, we got the. Was that in Peru, or that's that was the, if you didn't have a father from grandfather from Germany, that wouldn't be possible, or. Yeah, that wouldn't be possible. Like at at least. Uh, not the way we're doing it now, like oh. as a family. And well, I would have to get a visa, student visa or something. And so like fight a, for it a little more. <laughs> so you got a mixture of the Deutsche Ordnung and some Southern hospitality? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man, um, I love it. Yeah, love it's it. crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Do you have questions about the program? Well, let me tell you first. Like, we're we're like a spaceship that took off to the moon, and our sight is messy. Is that okay for you? Can you see yeah, an um, environment like that? Yeah, yeah. I gotta. I know it's gonna be hard. I know it's gonna be a long process. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be uh, exciting as well. Hmm. But yeah, I'm I'm ready for it. I'm really ready wow. for it. I'm ready for the. Yeah, I've been thinking it about uh, about a lot, you know, and uh, I always, uh, since about two years maybe, I heard about the program, Yeah. and I was uh, always aiming for the um, extre uh, summer extreme building, mm. summer extreme design building, yeah. Mm -hmm. Summer extreme design build, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And, uh, well, I was basically going uh, I wanted to apply there and I contact you and uh, you told me that the mentorship was there uh, was a possibility and I was like oh no yeah I want to go to the mentorship I want to do this I think that uh, it's some like a, even a stronger experience and then uh, you told me hey now the apprenticeship is is uh, is available and I said okay let's do it yeah, yeah wow but mm. but uh, yeah but like uh, as I told you you know like uh, at first I had to talk to my family and like, really get things sorted and uh, we basically decided that it was the best decision for us uh, when you say your family also your parents too no no well no your... basically yeah my wife and my kid yeah have you told your parents about this yet? And what do they think? Yeah, yeah, for sure. They're helping me even. Like, uh, they're doing... A, basically, uh, it's my decision, you know. But, uh, yeah, they're really supportive of, about this. And they they trust me, you know, in a lot wow. of sense. Wow, this is great. Man. Do you have, <clears throat> do you have any questions? E well, yeah, more than questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like um, this leadership track. I'm, uh, uh, I, oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of. Uh, uh -huh. I want to. I want to know w what is it about. What, uh -huh. what, are, what, what do you think about it? Mm -hmm. What are your uh, basically plans or motivations? Right. Yeah, um, we'd like to create, train movement entrepreneurs. Do you consider yourself a movement entrepreneur? Do you know what that is? A movement entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, n well, not n not so much. Uh, so it's a social, you... social entrepreneur, the word that you used on steroids. So this is about... <laughs> <laughs> so it's about people who, one, see that there's real issues that need to be solved in the world and they have the courage to work on it with open collaboration. Okay. And that's how we solve problems. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, sure. So yeah, we're serious. saying, hey, there's some issues in the world. Uh, we are creative and empowered. Well, we raise, we learn, because it takes learning to do that. We learn to solve problems and do them so to make a better world for everybody uh, mm -hmm. at the highest level. Like we know that there's issues, and very, very few people are working on them. Like most people get slotted into positions within a system that uh, continue the system. Exactly. Continue. Yeah. yeah, continuing the system. So we're saying, no, like, let's question everything and, and let's find out, let's create new enterprise models that simply change the, the old into the new towards the next economy. 
next to Kami defined as we're no longer competing. We're, um, it's not, no longer a proprietary economy. It's, a, it's an open collaborative economy where mm -hmm. our goal is to bring everybody up because um, I feel that um, if you study the, the way the world works, I think there's definite ways that I mean oppression. I don't. I don't like to use the word oppression, but but it is a systemic reduction of human potential that happens everywhere. It's mm -hmm. it's syst systemic. We don't even see it, but mm -hmm. we are so far from the the potential of humanity um, through our mental models. We're we're just kind of go through the world in a certain way, but we can make a much better world based on a, a world beyond scarcity, the, the scarcity mm -hmm. mindset of today, which is based on fear. Where I mean, if you talk about it psychologically that means the reptilian brain we are we're afraid we're like you know ten thousand a hundred thousand years ago our brains are that whereas we have learned how to transcend the scarcities and threats the real threats to existence mm -hmm. um, but the human brain hasn't really caught up to that so we're kind of still living in this fear and our whole economic system and worldview is that and one of the profound things that i'm learning uh, about the world is how little true collaboration exists and we're saying no let's be pe people let's collaborate let's let's take all the pre pressing world issues collaborate and solve them so that's what that's the job description for a movement ent entrepreneur <laughs> that's yeah. great man. it fits yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 well uh, and uh basically that goes uh, in line with uh, the community economic development right yes Yes, it's about distributing power from, like right now, power. The, the last thing that current economic system has not solved is distribution. We know how to produce things, right? Mm -hmm. We can overproduce things since the, turn, since the early 1900s. Production has very, very far outstripped our ability to consume. So that's not an issue, but we haven't learned how to distribute wealth or knowledge equitably. Exactly. to everybody else so it's a very uneven world and it's really playing out politically right now how uneven that mm -hmm. is uh so that's something to to address yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah well i'm very interesting i'm very interested in in being part of this program learning yeah. from from all of you and yeah. um uh, well, yeah you can, you can teach us <clears throat> what do you contribute? What can oh. you contribute outside of learning how to design? Because because the thing is, uh, in the program, we'll teach you how to design and build anything, and also the mindset of. Uh, but the first thing, it's really about co a collaborative mindset that allows you mm, to yeah. to work on problems collaboratively on a grand scale, uh, to to solve larger issues. Uh, that's that's the number one. Um, but what <laughs> what do you think you would you'd do with that? What do I think I, I, I would do? <laughs> yeah, well, um, I, I really wish to give back. I really wish to give back to my to my to my country and mm -hmm. maybe start there. Uh, well, um, a, a few years ago, uh, we uh, acquired the land in the north part of Peru. How much land? Like uh, eighty hectares, but it's mm. basically desert. It's a uh, it's a dry forest. So, it can you tell uh, me the location? Uh, what I Google? Well, you can put uh, Punta Punta Sal, or okay. yeah, Punta Sal Tumbes T U M B E S. Punta Sal is a city. No, it's like basically a beach. That's is that the land, Punta. Sal Beach, Peru. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's uh like one kilometer mm -hmm. away from the beach. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's basically Banana like. Rio Turistico Punta Sal. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Where's your place? Well, it's uh like just next to the highway, the Panamericana Highway. Uh huh. And um, yeah, it's 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 just there and. Uh, well, it, it's it's well, there's Sonia, all Sonia bungalows, three star yeah. hotel. Is it north of that or? I'm I'm not really sure. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll it's around check. there. Let me see the satellite image. Uh -huh, so, mm -hmm. how far from the highway? It's like uh, walking three minutes, two minutes. 
so it's it's it's, it's pretty it's pretty close uh, we we have water availability there's a uh, well I, I already been talking about it with some friends and uh -huh. uh, i think uh we're gonna start like uh, as soon as possible as soon as uh, kind of learn the the, the skills and the um, and, and basically, yeah, start the operation there. Mm -hmm. um, is it north of, there's the road called Punta Sal, the, the road that goes into Punta Sal? Yeah, well, yeah, it's basically on, yeah, yeah it's uh, on the other side of the highway. So it's not like... On the other side of the highway, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, we wanted to start there, I think uh, it's, it's more... Uh, convenient because it's already ours. Uh, mm -hmm. We're thinking of buying land in Cusco, in the Sacred Valley of the Incas. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a beautiful place and uh, mm -hmm. it's already surrounded by communities all around. And people that know a lot of permaculture, people that are advocated in uh, community development. It's, uh, it's an amazing place to be and uh, we, well, I, I've always wanted to do something there. Mm -hmm. But, well, I think because we are already owning that land in Punta Sal, I think it would be better to s start there. I don't know what's your opinion. Yeah. Um, how, long, how long have you owned that land? Uh, six years, maybe. Okay. Uh, I, <clears throat> you can start from scratch anywhere, I think. It depends what resources, like, so what do you envision for the, the location to do? Well, like, it's a... Um, it's a beautiful place and there's mm -hmm. a lot of um, like projects, housing projects. Mm -hmm. they, they, they are starting to do uh, beach houses. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, like the Sea Deco home, it's a really nice uh, place to start. Like uh, do a revenue model and start like uh, uh, creating houses there. And, uh, uh, do they build out of light frame construction there or just more brick? Brick yeah, stone. well, they 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 do. Um, one thing about Peru is that uh, they, well, b basically uh, Latin America is that they use a lot of adobe bricks, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, CB, I think it's uh, the most amazing thing ever. Uh, I've uh, worked with uh, almost fifty people in a rural community, and we managed to do like four hundred a day with fifty people working all day. And like when I've learned about the CB, I've uh, really uh, I was blown away. I thought like, wow, well, what? It's it's got so much potential, you know, yeah. and, and it's something that it's going to be so useful to 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 create housings in everywhere, basically. Hmm. Yeah. How would you envision? Um, so you know, we're yeah, yeah. As we develop this, how do you see? Um, maybe like what what's how do you look at it as far as the collaboration because we want collaborative development like training for collaborative development so we're always collaborating if you're working in Peru how does that play out well I uh, I was thinking of building a team mm -hmm. and uh, basically teaching them how to uh, design how to develop hardware and basically uh, start from there like mm -hmm. a small mm -hmm. team but uh, always on on uh, visioning global collaboration mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. like looking ways for 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 us to work together and and yeah. create this uh, digital community in a sense, right? Yeah, yeah, excellent. No, I think the location is. Um, I think you build it. Tell me, tell me the other location which you think is the beautiful In Inca Valley place. What do I? Say? Yeah, it's called uh, the Sig. Sacred Valley of the Incas, and uh, well, you can put Lamay. It's a it, th that's the place we wanted to to buy a place uh, to to buy a land. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful that's, valley. Yeah, and then the and it's not yet in. Um, oh wow! So so Peru, you also have the jungle on the east side yeah exactly wow. exactly yeah like uh yeah i think oh, like man. that's that that's my vision you know uh get the coast the andes 
the mountain range and and the and the jungle the amazon jungle holy cow that is so untouched over there yeah exactly yeah it's a beautiful place like if you compare that to like if you look at North American forests, you will see that there's <laughs> all these bites taken out of them yeah. in North America and Canada. Whereas if you <laughs> zoom out to your area, then so say Madre, the Madre Dios. Dios. Yeah, that's that's very it's close like, to it's untouched. It's like yeah, and well, there's a uh, uh, I oh think. That's unreal. Yeah, I didn't even know that kind of untouched land still exists anywhere. Man. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> because, like, all you see on <clears throat> in the media is where it's being cut down and stuff. So it yeah. makes it seem like that's all there is. But, yeah, and of course there's some desertified <laughs> areas around the Amazon. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, that's very cool. So, uh, tell me more. So, yeah. Uh, what else? What else? As far as questions, might you have? Um, yeah. Well, not like not much about uh, the the program really. I think I, I I've got it. Mm -hmm. But uh, like for example, um, the C deck uh, uh, Echo Home. Yeah. Uh, is it from? Uh, it's not from Adobe, right? It's not from uh, Adobe. This, it's like yeah, you did it through uh, wood, right? So this year we're doing the version that's light frame construction wood. Next year we're releasing the product that will be compressed earth block. So, oh, okay, okay. Uh, because of the difficulty of one versus the other, it's much easier to do the the lumber version and then move into the brick so because we we're still at in the point of developing a very robust revenue model that that can sustain the operation yeah. so between 3d printers cd co homes other workshops immersion training tractors brick presses those are the things we can produce most readily right now and i think the integrated business model of all of that makes it work but the house i think we can really scale the operation quite a bit yeah because Everyone needs a house, and we are offering it at a much lower cost than anyone else can build it, and it's better, much better. <laughs> so and it's expandable. All the features that you might have read yeah, about yeah. it, the expandability, modularity part, <laughs> uh, just just plain efficiency, plain open source digital housing 2.0, where it's completely digitized and therefore scalable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know how, I mean, just just to give you an insight of how things work in construction, if you're an architect, you don't design how you build it. You just give the design, general design, and then people, the builders figure out how to do it. And that process, mm -hmm. that disconnection between the two causes a lot of inefficiency because you're not exactly designing for the most optimal build. A lot of times you don't even know what an optimal build is because you, most architects don't build. So Except. it's pretty inefficient. And there's all these kinds of inefficiencies throughout the process that we're just simply saying, okay, let's let's get those out. Uh, in addition, do global collaboration. Do a full digital designer, like within either within Sweet Home 3D or FreeCAD or other software that now anybody can basically turn any person into the designer of their dream home. That's, yeah. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Good. Can't beat it. <laughs> uh, it's a good good value proposition. So yeah. Oh. Okay, one. I think I've got one more. Mm -hmm. um, what do you recommend me? Like, uh, well, I've, we've got almost a month. What do you recommend me on starting? I think uh, uh, CAD. Yes. CAD is I good. can get you started. Uh, are you out of school now already? You finished? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Oh, okay, great. Uh, I'll, I'll set you up. The first thing is the FreeCAD badge, understanding the basic okay. workf workflow in FreeCAD. If you're savvy about it, then you can learn very quickly but help me on this by there's a very deliberate procedure we follow on that that procedure also allows us to learn how we can teach people more effectively because the vision is that we can take any person and within one hour get them into this basic workflow we have done this well wow. there's people that 
I trained in person. In fact, w one time in Spain, we had like three out of eight people finish that exercise after about one hour of me teaching them okay. how to use FreeCAD. <laughs> Uh, but do they have any background on um, programming? Some of them had background in CAD, others did not. Okay, okay, okay. Um, no, yeah, we're talking about I'm, novices. I'm ready. novices. We got to teach novices. Uh, yeah, it's exactly. You have to understand the concepts. So you got a business uh, plan of action. Yeah, and right. help me learn, help us learn by providing feedback on what in that process was effective and not so that we can okay. keep improving this. So everything that we do here is about improving the process and constant learning. And we start like that, like in a, that, that first free cat exercise, help us do that. And I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going to get more deliberate because I've asked people to do this and a lot of people don't do it, don't follow it. So I'm going to make it make sure that's all included on a, the free cat badge page. I'll keep editing that to make little things like make sure you document it, and then uh, from the procedure that we teach, like, tell me, like, what is not clear? Because, okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. That just simple feedback. So feedback, mm -hmm. feedback loops. It's always about feedback loops. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah, the I first think, thing. Uh -huh. um, like documenting every yeah. step of my learning process, right? Yeah. That... Yeah. If you, if you do that, I mean, you're literally think about it as what you're doing is important and it makes a difference. That's, that's how I operate. I'm saying. Um, this is important. We got to open source civilization. <laughs> and here's the process of how you go from step A to step, step Z in that process. But I mm -hmm. feel that's super valuable. And that's why I'm motivated to do it. So the first thing is you have to understand why you're doing it. It's important. What we're doing is important. And if you, if you document, you can help others who are in your position exactly. to do the same. And with that comes the question, where do we find more people like you? Right? Do you know any more people that are uh, motivated in a, in a similar way to yourself? Well, yes, for sure. But um, I think they're all back in Peru, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's 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 gonna be tough, you know. To uh, well, it, in in a sense, uh, through CAD, it's possible. Mm -hmm. But but otherwise, you're you're free. Uh, like you, school finished already for you, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah totally free. I'm just okay. gonna do the the thesis, but uh, yeah, like uh, it's. Uh, I, I'm not like my objective is really uh, do OSC more yeah. than anything. So like I, if I'm here, it's like uh, I don't need to graduate to uh, from high school if I'm already in the university, you know. <laughs> so yeah, it's basically that's how I see it. Okay. That's good. That's good. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Well, great stuff. Great stuff. So so yeah, I think we can call it. Finish yeah. up here. Okay, have a, a good day. Okay, thanks so much. Talk to you See soon. Bye-bye.